My name is Sylvia Nasser, the author of Grand Pursuit, the story of economic genius. The history of economic progress in four minutes. 1811, the average Englishman lives little better than a Roman slave. Potatoes are a luxury. 1840, the mid-Victorian boom marks the beginning of the modern revolution in living standards. 1842, Charles Dickens writes an instant bestseller, The Christmas Carol. He calls for an end to class warfare and better wages. 1850, Henry Mayhew, a founder of Punch, invents investigative reporting with a 90-part series about London's poorest workers. 1866, labor's share of national income is rising. Karl Marx's own income puts him in the top 2% of British households. 1867, Das Kapital goes to press without Karl Marx ever visiting a factory. 1870, Alfred Marshall wonders why every man can't be a gentleman, someone who can afford to enjoy leisure and to educate his children. 1898, Carnegie Steel triples output without increasing its workforce, thanks to superior management and brain workers. 1908, Beatrice Webb invents the idea of the welfare state. 1911, Irving Fisher endorses the idea of a diversified stock portfolio. Maynard Keynes disagrees and advocates buying and selling one stock at a time. 1918, Keynes convinces the British Treasury to invest in French painting instead of French loans. Irving Fisher invents the cost of living adjustment, raising his staff's salaries in step with inflation. 1929, Austrian economist Friedrich Hayek predicts that the U.S. boom will end in a bust. 1931, President Herbert Hoover responds to the Great Depression with tax cuts, easier money, and public work spending. 1936, Keynes loads up on U.S. stocks and becomes wealthy. 1945, Hayek warns that government control of the private sector will destroy political freedom, yet supports government action to promote post-war economic recovery. 1952, Mao Zedong comes to power. China's standard of living is only 50% of Africa's and 5% of America's. 1960, Joan Robinson denies that the Great Leap has resulted in famine even as Mao declines foreign food aid. 1963, Paul Samuelson says he'd rather write the nation's economic textbooks than its laws. JFK proposes a tax cut that leads to faster economic growth and a falling federal deficit. 1979, Milton Friedman convinces President Jimmy Carter that easy money and too much regulation is to blame for the nation's economic woes. 1998, Amartya Sen becomes the first Asian to win an economics Nobel. 2010, even after the worst financial crisis since the 1930s, U.S. per capita income is still higher than at the peak of the 1990s boom or in the mid-aughts. For the story of how economic geniuses changed history, read Grand Pursuit by Sylvia Nasser.